What is up YouTube and welcome back to the series how to get better at photography. Today we're going to improve your photography by teaching you how to expertly use the ISO setting in your camera. By mastering the use of your ISO you can really leverage the rest of your camera settings in order to get the best light in your photos. So let's go! So first things first, let's answer the question, what is an ISO and how do we use it? Simply put, the ISO is a setting that controls your sensitivity on your camera's sensor. So the lower your ISO setting, it'll decrease the amount of light your camera picks up. The higher the ISO setting will increase the amount of light your camera picks up. If you've ever really messed with this setting, then you know this. Ramping up your ISO way too much in a dark environment will actually create a ton of noise in your photos and ruin them. If you really want to know how this works or why this happens, I recommend just Google searching ISO stuff and you can really find the science behind why this is happening. But in this video, we're just going to focus on what we can do to best utilize it in our photography. So let me tell you something that's actually very important when it comes to ISO. High ISO settings does not automatically mean noise in your photo. Let me say that again. High ISO settings does not automatically mean noise in your photo. Noise is actually caused more so when you have a way underexposed photo and you're trying to bring light out of the underexposed photo. So today we're going to look at is how to properly utilize your ISO settings so that way when you go to edit you have minimal adjustments and a lot less noise. So let's briefly go over some of the other camera settings. I'm just going to fly through this and assume that you already know what most of these settings do and not give you an in-depth course on this. So as you know, all the settings that you adjust in your camera actually affect the amount of light. Your aperture affects your focal length, but increasing it actually decreases the amount of light you let in as well. Your shutter controls the speed in which your lens opens and closes, but also affects the amount of light that you let in your camera. And the ISO setting simply controls the sensitivity of your camera's sensor to light. And basically that's photography in a nutshell. You're always trying to balance the right settings with the right light to get the perfect photo. So when we look at ISO settings, let's break it down into three common types of photographs that a lot of people take. Number one, shooting a subject that's completely still that you may need a deeper aperture for. A good example of this is something like real estate photography or landscapes. Number two, shooting a subject that's somewhat still that you can lower the aperture on. Something like portraits or even some wildlife. And number three, shooting a fast moving subject, something like sports, action, or even some fast moving wildlife. Number one, shooting a still subject that needs a deep aperture. This requires the least amount of ISO. Because your subject is still, you can really lower the shutter speed to compensate for your higher aperture. Using a tripod and a slower shutter speed will allow you to let as much light in as you need to create your picture. With this type of photo, I recommend using 100 to 400 ISO. Number two, shooting something that's somewhat slow that you can use a low aperture in. Because we've already dialed our aperture back, we're already letting in more light. But because the subject isn't perfectly still, we still need to have a moderate shutter speed. Maybe even a little bit higher if we're shooting by hand and not using a tripod. For this application, we can increase the ISO to help correct any of the light that we're sacrificing by raising the shutter speed. Assuming that the scene is decently lit and not at night, we can add a little bit more ISO to get the perfect settings. I recommend 400 to about 3200 ISO to get that photo within the right range. Number three, shooting a fast moving subject. This is where you can really maximize your ISO to your advantage. If you happen to be lucky enough to afford an amazing telephoto lens that has a super low aperture, like this lens that's over $20,000, then you are already at an advantage and you should have no problems getting the right shot. However, if you're like me and you can't afford those $20,000 lenses, then you already know the struggles of trying to get the perfect light in these types of shots. Most of the cheaper lenses have aperture sizes that only allow you to go as low as 8 to 16, depending on your zoom. Then guess what? Because you're shooting a fast moving object, you have to ramp the shutter speed way up to get the action to stop and be clear. So when you're shooting something like this, I highly, highly recommend that you try out some higher ISO settings. 3000 all the way up to the maximum amount your camera has. Again, this is assuming that you're shooting in a well lit environment during the daytime. If you're talking about shooting these type of shots at night or early morning or late in the evening, then we're talking about a whole different video. But assuming your light is decent, ramping that ISO way up will really allow you to turn up that shutter speed with the aperture that you're stuck with and really try and capture that fast moving motion and make it stop 
on a dime. Now let's talk about what happens when you turn the ISO up higher. Yes, you may deal with some extra noise in your photos. However, it's gonna be a lot more manageable when you have the correct exposure with the higher ISO setting than if you have a way underexposed shot because you kept the ISO low. So, the ultimate takeaway from this video is this. A better exposed photo with the higher ISO setting is in fact better than an underexposed photo with a lower ISO setting. So don't be that type of photographer that thinks that they always have to shoot on the most ultra low ISO setting. When the photo style and the lighting allows it, then yes, shooting on a lower ISO is a better option. However, if you're sacrificing the correct exposure just to have a lower ISO setting, then you're doing yourself a disservice and it'll really show in your photos. Try out some different settings and really focus on trying to get the proper exposure straight out of your camera. If you do this, when you get home and you start to edit your photos, you're gonna be real thankful that you're not dealing with shots that are way underexposed that are just completely unusable. So thanks again for watching. We're on our third video and we're continuing to pump them out all the time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and we're gonna be releasing content just for you to help you improve your photography. And if you got something out of this video, make sure to hit that like button and share it with someone you think will help them as well. I'm Lucas with Tiger Melon Photography and we'll see you on the next video.